Hey guys, it's Ryan, and in this video, we're going to show you how to scrape the web with Python and Beautiful Suit 4. So, as promised, I'm going to show you how to scrape socialblade.com. And once we've done that, we're going to put the data into a CSV file so we can open it in Excel. So, that's what we're going to do in this tutorial. So, with that being said, we're going to jump straight into the tutorial. Okay, guys, so the first thing we do once you get on your computer here, sorry, let me clear this. Is you want to install Beautiful Suit 4. So, so to do this, if you have the pip package manager installed, you can just go pip install uh, Beautiful Suit 4, and it should get that installed. I already have it, but it, it'll go through a bit of a reinstall there. Next thing you want to do is make your Python file. So in a terminal, you can just do touch uh, scrape.py, and that'll get the file going for you. Of course, you could just create it normally as well. I've got Adam up in here, so we can go ahead and get that started now. So the first thing we want to do is import URL lib2. Now to be clear, I'm using Python 2 here, not Python 3. If you are using Python 3, there is a different URL lib. Uh, but I know Beautiful Soup works with Python 2, so I'm just going to keep using that for now. Uh, the next thing, the other thing we want to do is just import, uh, f sorry, from BS4, so Beautiful Soup 4. We want to import Beautiful Soup. Okay. So once we have that, we actually want to establish what um, page we're going to do. So I'm going to call it just just page, and we need the URL. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up socialblade.com. Perfect. And what I want to scrape is the top list. So I'm going to go to top 50 YouTubers, and we're going to sort them by video views. So I want to get all these YouTubers, I want to get their name, uh, I want to get their video views, and I want to store that in an Excel sheet. So we can just go ahead and copy this link here as the first part of this process and throw it in a variable there. So now we need to actually load the page. So to do that, we're going to create a web request, and that's going to be a URL lib2.request. It uh, needs to be a capital there. Make sure it's a capital. Dot request. And we're going to pass it the page. And I'm just going to pass it the page for now. And I, sh I will show you guys in a second. This won't work. And I'll show you why. We're just going to pass it the page for now so that we can get a good um, idea. And you know what? Let's just actually rename this to URL. And with that URL, we can go. I'm now, I'm now going to create page as another variable. I'm going to be URL lib two dot URL open, and then we're going to pass it that request. Okay. Then we need to create our beautiful soup object, so we can go soup equals beautiful soup, and then we can pass it that page. And now here's where you pass in your parser. Beautiful soup works with multiple different parsers. But the easiest one to use is just html.parser. So if you're not too sure what the difference is between different parsers, html.parser is a good bet. Perfect. So now that we have that, we basically have the web page scraped, hopefully. Um, what we want to do is see if we can find some tags in it. Now, the one trick with Social Blade, it's kind of a good one to show an example with because it is tricky, uh, but it's also maybe a bit different than a normal page. But the issue with it is that their CSS doesn't seem to use classes. It's all in inline CSS. I'm not sure if this is to like deter people from scraping the website or why they made the page like this. It seems to me they probably just don't really know how to do web programming, but uh, it's all these like inline styles and like barely anything is a class. You can see like some stuff uses classes and then there's all these inline styles. So it's really weird to me. Um, but it probably just has to do something with the way the page is coded. Anyway, there's no class for each of these lines, which is what I typically identify it with. But what we can do is actually do a search with just the style inline style attribute. 
So what you want to do is you want to do soup.find. In this case, I'm going to do find all. So if you just want to find one object, you can do soup.find. If you need to find a list of objects, in this case, I want to find every row in the table, we can do a soup.find all. And then you pass in as a string the name of the tag you want. So I'm looking for divs. Um, actually, my apologies. This is going to be a regular find. So the issue I had before was trying to find each one of these. They all have a slightly different color. So you can see this one's FAA, FA, FA, FA. This one's F8, F8, F8. So you can't pass a single one of these strings in. So what you're looking for is to pass, um, to find the parent and then just search for like most of the list. And we'll trim these ones off at the top. So that's kind of how we do that. So first I'm just trying to find this one with this style float right with 900 pixels. So we're just going to use a single find. What we're going to do is adders equals, um, and then this is going to be a dictionary object. So we can do style colon, and then you can just paste in that. Now you could put class here and then a class name, or another way to do a class is if you just go underscore class equals and then just go like that and obviously you wouldn't use the adders there so it would be like that but uh, for whatever reason the site uses inline styles so if you do come across a site like that then this is how you can kind of deal with it um, it's pretty big pain to be honest with you um, and then what we can do is we can go find all and then we're gonna find all the divs under that. So the divs that are gonna be children. And then one thing I'm gonna do here is turn off recursive. So normally if I did find all div, it would go and find every div that was a child of this div, uh, including ones that are inside other divs. If I say recursive is equal to false, then it will just find all these surface level children. Right, so um, it's going to find this div and then it's going to give us a list of all these divs here just like I have in the thing without dropping down any of the arrows and going like oh there's a div here, div here, div here, div here. It won't find any of these divs. It'll just find these divs right here which is all we want to find. Whereas normally it would go and find this div and then it would find all these divs inside here too. But in this case that's not what we want. We want to find a single row at a time and be able to work with that object. So then you can always just do a print. Uh, my apologies, I want to do, uh, I'm going to call it rows equals that. And we can do a print rows and see what we get just to see if everything's working properly. And at this point, I'm not expecting it to because of that user agent issue that I mentioned earlier, where we haven't supplied a user agent here and it's going to outright just deny us. But I'll show you guys what that looks like just so you get the kind of idea. Perfect. So it's given us an HTTP error. Now, if we wanted to be really great script people, we could actually catch this error. So we could do like a try catch statement. Uh, it's not a bad idea because every once in a while, if you're gonna be using this script a lot, uh, you're gonna come across an HTTP error. But if you're writing a script to scrape data like one time, it's really not necessarily to, sorry, not necessary to add in error catching. It's just gonna slow you down. Uh, but in this case, we got the HTTP error of 403 forbidden. So that's really weird because everything's working fine in my browser, but the URL library isn't passing any user agent. So what you can do is actually just go over here and type in what is my user agent in DuckDuckGo or Google. It will tell you your entire user agent. Copy this bit right here. So in my case, mine is Mozilla. And then after this URL, we can pass in headers. And then the only one we need is just that user agent. And we can just throw our user agent in there. And now it won't know the difference between our script and our browser. Obviously, there's other ways to tell between the script and the browser. But for our purposes, this will be good enough to trick Social Blade into thinking that this is our browser. And so now if we go like this, it actually shows us the stuff. And so that's great. It's a pretty messy printout, but it is what we need. Perfect. OK. So now we basically got all these rows. We also got these three rows here, which don't contain the thing we need. So there's four rows at the start that we don't need. So we basically just want to cut them off. So we can use Python's little list selector thing to go for colon. So that will take 
um, index 4 and beyond. So of course remember lists are 0 index so we're gonna drop off the first 4 and then we'll take start with the 5th element and then just go to the end of the list if you don't specify a ending point. Then what we want to do is say for row in rows. So for each row that we find, we basically want to get this username, we want to get this upload number, and we want to get this video view total. Okay. So they're already ordered for the rank, so I'm not going to worry about scraping that bit, but you could too if you wanted. So underneath each one of these, we'll see they continue with their inline style theme. It's super duper annoying. Um, and you can see multiple even have the same one here. So we're going to have to do the same strategy of using the list slicing to actually find what we're looking for. So the first thing that we're looking for is actually the username. We can see that there's a div here with an anchor tag, and then that is stored as the text of the anchor tag. So what we can actually do here is say username is going to be equal to row.find. We're going to find a div. I'm just thinking actually if that's the only anchor, we could find the div or we could just straight up find the anchor. So that's the only anchor, so we might as well just go find a dot text dot strip. So it's going to strip it of any white space. Never a bad idea to just call a dot strip on anything you're scraping from the web. Uh, you don't really always know if what you're pulling in is free of white space, so it's never a bad idea. And like I say, in this case, this is the only anchor tag, so that's why I could just simply do a find for A and then pull in the text to get the username. So the other thing here is the span with a color of hashtag 555. Five, five. So what I'm actually going to do is go, we can do um, I'm, I'm just going to call it numbers equals row dot find we'll do a span and then again we're going to do adders equals uh, pass it style and then we're going to find base where the style is color 555 okay and then so this is going to pull us in everything that's that I think there's three of them and then we can use list slicing to figure out um, exact data points here. So the first one is going to be the number of uploads. So we can just use zero for that. So I'm going to say uploads is equal to numbers at index zero. The third one is going to be this one here. I'm hoping that this is a slightly different color, this first thing. Um, well, it's a div, so that's perfect. Uh, and then the third one is going to be those video views. It should be the video views. So we're going to have to go views equals numbers and then an index two to get the third item. And we can simply just print um, username plus space plus uh, uploads plus space plus views. And this should give us a good. Uh, idea of whether the program is pulling the right stuff for us or not. So we can go ahead and run it. We'll see what happens. We get a key error. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. And that's because I wanted to do a find all. Perfect, and I want to do a text.strip here. My apologies. Doing this a little bit different than I had. I had the notes, but I think it's a better method in this case. 
Perfect, and we got exactly what we're looking for. So we have the username, followed by the number of out uploads, and then the total number of views that they have. So we can see T-Series right at the top here with 13,000 uh, uploads and over 68 billion views. Pretty crazy. Um, so yeah, that's, that's awesome. Perfect. So we've got the data scraped. Now what we really want to do is put it in some sort of file so that we can access it later because just printing it in a terminal obviously isn't that helpful. Um, what you probably want to do is record it in some sort of file. In this case, the file type that I want to use is the CSV file. You could record it in any file, but a CSV file is going to be pretty simple for us to uh, both code in Python and work with after the fact. So to do that, I need to go import CSV at the top here, import CSV. As part of my initialization here, I need to open the CSV file. So I'm going to say file equals open. I'm going to call it top YouTubers.csv. So comma separated value. We're going to open that with write. Uh, we also need a CSV writer. So I'm going to call it writer is csv.writer. And we're going to pass the open file to it. I'm also going to uh, write a header row. So a CSV file, when you pull it into Excel or any other program, uh, it's nice if it has that header at the top. A lot of programs are looking for that. And if you're going to be giving this data to anyone but yourself, you're going to want to have some way to identify what the numbers in the rows mean. Obviously, the username is pretty obvious, but it's not obvious that the uploads are uploads and that the views are views. Um, so what we can just do is we can go writer dot write row. This takes an array of the comma separated values that it's going to put on the row. So we can give it just um, username, uploads, and then views. So those are going to be our header items. Then what we want to do, I'm still going to print it just so we can see that the program's operating correctly. After we print it though, I'm going to do a writer.write row. Same thing here. We're going to do username. What we need to do is we need to encode it as UTF-8. Otherwise, it will complain that ASCII can't encode some values. Still, I find some of these characters don't really work um, too well if they're foreign, but it's kind of a battle for another day. So we can go ahead and write uh, row there, then we can do uh, file.close at the end of the script. So what we should see now when we run it is that, but also a resulting file. Here I have top YouTubers.csv. We can go ahead and open that, and it will open up with Microsoft Excel in my case, but you can use pretty much any program to open this. You can just even just open it in Notepad, and it'll be pretty readable. We can see we have these titles, so that's perfect. Obviously, we can't put any styling on the titles because CSV doesn't support those kind of features, uh, as it's just a basic plain text file format uh, that Microsoft is trained to interpret in Excel and other spreadsheet programs. Uh, so it's warning us of potential data loss here. Just if we tried to do something like bold this or make it italic, it wouldn't be able to save that in the CSV properly. And we have the data here in Excel, so we can do some further analysis of it. So that's all I wanted to show you guys today. If you guys did enjoy the video, be sure to give it that thumbs up. Remember, I'll have the link in the description to my number one recommended uh, Python book if you guys are looking to learn more Python. If you guys enjoyed the video and want to see more in the future, be sure to subscribe and leave a comment. And I'll see you guys in the next video.